1.1.1.1. What the heck is that number? Obviously, it's an IP address. Most of you can probably tell that. And actually one that you should probably know because it's kind of useful to you even if you didn't realize it yet. So specifically, it is a DNS service run by a company called Cloudflare. You may have heard of it. I'll kind of get to that in a bit. If you're wondering what a DNS server is, basically you can think of it like a phone book of the internet. So when you type in a web address into your browser, your computer doesn't know how to actually get to that website. So it contacts a DNS server, which stands for domain name server, and then it translates that name of the website into an IP address for your computer so your computer can talk to the website server that way. So you can theoretically just type in the direct IP address of a website instead of typing in like google.com, but obviously that's not that practical, so that's why we have DNS services. Now back to this IP address, it kind of sounds fake, right? I mean 1.1.1.1, but it actually is a completely valid IP address, and for now it's been held by a company called Apnic which is basically a registry, specifically in like the Asian territories. So they have a lot of IP addresses that they control and this happens to be one of them. But you see the problem with this IP address is up until now it's basically been useless because it almost seems like a fake IP address. So it's been used as a placeholder by so many people and so many companies who if they just need to put in like a dummy IP address, they'll just put in 1.1.1.1. So you have all these random servers around the world using this as basically a trash can for testing or as like a black hole where they don't want to actually send any information, but they don't realize that it actually is going somewhere. But because there is so much of that, that anyone that would try to actually set up a DNS service on this or really use this IP address at all would be completely overwhelmed by all that junk data. So even though Apnic has been holding this IP address, they haven't been able to even use it because there's so much junk data they can't handle it. So that is where Cloudflare comes along. Cloudflare, if you're not familiar with what that service is, it's a website that basically has servers and a huge network all around the world and their whole point is they allow you to put your website behind a CDN or content delivery network and they will absorb any denial of service attacks. So hackers around the world what they'll do is they'll get a botnet which is a whole bunch of infected computers and have those computers all send data to one IP address so that they can basically take down websites and overwhelm them. So you sign up with a service like Cloudflare that literally can absorb all that bandwidth because they have networks specifically designed for that. So no matter how much data some botnet is trying to send at your website, Cloudflare will be able to handle that, evenly distribute it, and it will still be accessible to all your users. So Cloudflare having this service is in the perfect position to be able to handle all that junk data that is being sent to this 1.1.1.1 IP address. Perfect match. So basically Apnic is lending this IP address to Cloudflare to use as a DNS service. Cloudflare is starting this brand new service and you can use it right now and it's actually pretty good. And a reason for that is that Cloudflare is specifically going to offer this as a privacy focused DNS service. And yes, it will be free. And they say that they will not write any of the requests to the disk. And they will also delete any data or logs that they get about you using the service within 24 hours. I mean, that's pretty good. You can't really ask for more than that. So if you do use this DNS service, you can pretty much be certain that it's not going to keep any logs. And they actually did hire an audit firm, KPMG, you may have heard of it before, it's huge, to ensure and guarantee to people who are wondering, wait, are they really keeping logs? Well, no, they hired this audit service to ensure that. And get this, even though this new DNS service is brand new, it's actually the fastest one. It's beating out all the other DNS services. So there's one website, I'll read the stats here, it's by a website called DNS Performance, and they measure DNS speeds and latency. So Google DNS has about 34 milliseconds delay. Open DNS, another free one, is 20 milliseconds and Cloudflare's new 1.1.1.1 is only 13 milliseconds. So they're the new kid on the block 
and they're the best one in two regards. They don't keep logs completely private and they're the fastest, sign me up. And really the speeds of Google DNS and OpenDNS are actually regarded as pretty good. I mean, usually you switch to Google DNS if you wanna upgrade to a faster one than like your ISP DNS server, which you're probably using by default if you didn't change it. Normally when you sign up for internet service, you just automatically use whatever their DNS service is, but you can specifically change it if you want, which I'll tell you how to do later. So especially if you're switching from that DNS from your ISP to this Cloudflare one, you might actually see a significant increase in snappiness to internet requests. If you're already using Google DNS or OpenDNS, probably not that much, maybe, but hey, it's worth a try at least. But we're not even done yet. Another good thing about this one is that they're pushing encrypted DNS. If you're not aware, basically no DNS services right now allow for encrypted DNS. So everything you send to it is just plain text, which means that even if you're using a website that is an HTTPS connection, so even though an ISP, for example, can't listen in on what you're doing on that exact website, they can still see every single website that you're going to, like the top level website, even if you're not even using their DNS service. So even if you use Google DNS, it's not encrypted, your ISP still sees what websites you're going to, even if they can't see specifically which pages are going on there and what you're doing on there. So the only way to avoid that would be to use something like a VPN, which would pass all your data, including the DNS requests, through the VPN. So if you don't wanna do that, then you're really kind of screwed in terms of privacy. However, there are actually two different technologies, at least, that do allow encrypted DNS. Those are called DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS, and they are both supported in Cloudflare's new service. Now, they're not the first ones to do this. Google DNS actually does support it, but it's not easy to set up at all. In fact, I'm not really aware of any browsers or operating systems that even support encrypted DNS. I don't even think Chrome does, even though Google DNS supports it. So hopefully with this introduction that now Google DNS supports it and Cloudflare, that's another one that supports it, we might see new services that support it as well. And actually there is hope with that because with some recent Android updates, the code that was introduced kind of suggests that they are adding encrypted DNS to Android natively. So I'm really excited about that. And it's just gonna be kind of like a snowball of adoption because you know if Android supports something that's super privacy oriented like that, you just know that Apple is not gonna be able to ignore that for a while. They're gonna introduce it the first chance they get. So I'm really excited to see that. And then eventually I'm sure we'll start to see it on routers as well. So you don't have to get it on individual devices, Windows and all that. So if you do wanna change your DNS service, how do you go about doing that? There's actually two ways you can do it at least. One is on the individual device, you can set the DNS server or you can do it on the router, which would apply to all the devices on your network that are automatically configured, so you don't have to configure it individually. Of course, you can do it on the router and then also do a completely separate one on the individual device level, but we're not, not gonna get too far into that. Probably the easiest way is to do it on your router, so first we can go over that. First, you need to go to your router's web interface to control it. So that is going to be probably one out of three IP addresses, nine times out of 10. One of them is either 192.168.1.1 is the most common. There, it might also be 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.2.1. 99% of the routers out there will be that IP address. Another way to instantly know what it is, is on your iPhone. If you go to the network information, when you're connected to Wi-Fi, it'll literally show you router IP. And the same goes for Android. If you go to the network settings and the Wi-Fi, it'll be called default gateway, and that's your IP. Or, of course, you could always just do a Google search for your name of your router and IP address, and it should come up. And then finally, once you're in the actual router settings, you're gonna look for the DNS server options where you put those in. It's gonna be a different location for every router, so maybe under connectivity settings or something. And there's probably gonna actually be two fields, one for a primary and secondary DNS. 
So it might say static DNS, static DNS one and two, primary and secondary DNS servers or DNS server addresses, something like that and two fields for those. So this service actually does have two IP addresses. So the first one is the main one, 1.1.1.1, and the other one is 1.0.0.1 as the secondary IP address. So you will have to put in those both. Well, I don't think you'd necessarily have to put in the second one, but it's basically just a backup. And there might be a third space for like a tertiary IP address for DNS. Don't even have to worry about that. So once you do that, you just click save and then you're good to go. All of your devices on your network connected to that router will be using those DNS servers. Now I would be interested to know what you guys get as results. If you're using your current ISP's default DNS and then you switch to this, do you notice a huge difference? Maybe you're using Google DNS and you don't notice a difference at all. Who knows, you can talk about that down in the comments. I don't know if I necessarily noticed a big difference before I was using Google DNS, but again, I just like it for the privacy aspect over anything. But anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here, you can just click on those. If you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every week. And again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.